Behold, an animated movie engineered for world dominance. You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of Rio. Your macaw is a very special bird. Woo! In fact, Blue is the last male of his kind. I have a kind? The only other blue macaw is in Rio de Janeiro. Brazil? Rio, Rio, Whoa! Don't worry, I'm gonna make Blue look irresistible. <sighs> This movie cannot fail. That's because it's been brilliantly conceived by Blue Sky Studios from a business perspective. First off, by taking place in Brazil, it taps into the South American market as well as the Hispanic demographic right here in the United States, which both have tremendous box office heft. Then, to broaden the film's appeal, the voice cast is incredibly diverse, from Oscar nominees Jesse Eisenberg and Anne Hathaway, to George Lopez, to Jamie Foxx, to Jermaine Clement, to Will I Am. And they all sing, even Jesse Eisenberg. And there are dance numbers. Pretty much everyone in the world loves big dance numbers. And these are done with birds, on a beach, in the jungle, in 3D. These days, with rising ticket prices and movies hitting DVD within a mere three months of their release, it's all about convincing moviegoers that a film needs to be seen in theaters. And Rio has a pretty convincing argument. Perhaps that's because Brazilian-born director Carlos Saldana is speaking from the heart, as this is his dream project. And Blue Sky Studios has the ability to back him up, as they're behind the tremendously successful Ice Age franchise, which Saldana worked on, and Horton Hears a Who. Still don't believe this film is destined for success? Well, even before it opens here in the U.S., it's already a smash hit with international audiences, as it opened in numerous countries last weekend to the tune of $55 million, making it the biggest opening so far of 2011 and taking the number one spot in almost every market it played, including Brazil, Russia, and Mexico. Yes, this movie is pitch perfect from a business perspective. Let's go ask audiences how it does from a creative one. This film is a huge hit overseas. Yeah. Can you see why? It's awesome. I mean, it was good. I, I guess I'd have to figure out why it's the number one overseas. <laughs> Maybe South America likes to see it. <laughs> it's doing very well there. I would but guess. Also Russia. I guess because it's the beach, maybe? I have no idea why Russia loves it. <laughs> what did you think of the setting in Rio? The setting? I happened to live in Rio for a while. Oh, you did? Yeah? And, uh, did they, they get it right? They, uh, they got it perfect. Uh, not a lot of movies take place in Rio. It, what did you think of the setting? It was cool. I mean, it's beautiful. Like, every, especially everyone that's never been to Brazil is like, that looks really awesome, <laughs> you know? So I should go. Yeah. It's a beautiful city, not oh, to be in At the same time, it's sad at time because there's a large, large amount of poverty in there. Mm -hmm. So, but then you have, like, the best of two worlds. Do you because, think they showed that in the movie? Do you think uh, they... I, don't, I think to a degree, when uh, the, cha the, the kid was on the roof, and you live in the favelas, so you can see that too. That also comes across. So oh, it's very human. What did you like about it? The, the, the songs and the humor. It was very colorful. There was music the whole time. It had a rhythm to it. It was, you know, a lot of fun. How was the music? The music, oh, you cannot get enough of it. The music, it was, it was amazing. Oh, that's great. So, so you know, there are so many 3D movies, okay? But we got a 3D break for a while, and now it's back. Yeah. How was the 3D here? 3D, it was fantastic. Do you think it's worth seeing this movie in 3D? Yes. How is the 3D, by the way? Uh, beautiful. It comes across. You know, you have to be ducking. Oh, yeah? This. Did you see it in 3D? Uh, no. So, Thankfully, no. Why didn't no. you see it in 3D? Because that's extra money I don't need to spend. Do you feel you missed out on anything? Not at all. Oh, okay. All right, cool. Very cool. And there's very few movies I feel are worth 3D. Oh, okay. What's your criteria for 3D? Um, If you come up with the reason, like, spend 10 years on it, like Avatar, I'll go see it in 3D. <laughs> How does this movie differentiate from other animated films? How is it different? Uh, I, I think that... There's a lot of color and a lot of work went into it. Uh, a lot into the details. Uh, even though it talks about bird, but it talks about different bird, which it talks about all the people of the world in reality, all oh, colors, yeah? Nice. yeah? I don't think it differs. I, I think it's it's like many of the animated films. I mean, it follows a, you know, ragtag team trying to solve a problem, which is <laughs> it, the answer of every animated film ever. That's true. So a like, ragtag group well, solves a major well, dilemma getting, or saves somebody. That's very true. But are you getting tired of it? Or are you like, bring it on? If done well, I don't care. So what would you give this movie on a 1 to 10? 
ten. Ten. Eight and a half. Okay. Oh, eight and a half. Like a seven. While audiences aren't blown away by re. They're still dancing to its Latin beat, giving the movie overall an 8.5. And be sure to tune in for Movie Math Live every Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I cover the weekend box office, followed by a Q&A about the business of Hollywood. Just go to youtube.com slash beyond the trailer and click on the live tab at the top of the page. I'm Grace Randolph reporting from AMC. Empire 25, and I hope you'll go beyond the trailer for these other top movies.